the most important thing is to eat real food that grows from the ground. We've known for decades that plant-based foods are healthiest. The reason people don't eat more vegetables is they just don't realize how powerful they are. Every vegetable is delicious. Real cooking is about taking a vegetable like a Brussels sprout or a maitake mushroom and making them so incredibly delicious that you, you realize that cooking is all about flavor. Food is an intrinsic part of human existence. We come together around food, celebrate around food, and build traditions around food. Despite its fundamental role, our diet is one of the most worrisome aspects of modern life. But after decades of research, there's hope that we may finally know how to change that. The leading causes of death and disability are largely chronic diseases now, but 80% is completely diet and lifestyle. It's what we expose ourselves to, what we put in our mouth, both cigarettes and food, whether we're exercising. These are the critical components, and that's good news. I mean, we, that means we have tremendous power over our health destiny and longevity. The vast majority of premature death and disability is preventable with a healthy enough diet, and other lifestyle behaviors. Medicine is excellent. We have got antibiotics. We can put you in a cast. We can take you to emergency surgery. We can slow down your diabetic blindness and kidney failure and amputations with drugs, with insulin injections. Unfortunately, none of these are actually treating the cause of the disease. Today, mounting evidence points to a plant-based diet, meaning food that grows from the ground, as the best way to prevent, treat, and reverse chronic illnesses. Dr. Michael Greger is an author and world-renowned public health expert who's been highlighting the life-changing power of plants. He and his team review thousands of medical studies each year and distill them into practical advice for his website, nutritionfacts.org. One of the most comprehensive studies on health and eating habits was the 2005 China study by Dr. T. Colin Campbell, a landmark report that found significantly lower rates of chronic illness throughout rural China, where people largely survived on plant-based diets. There are populations around the world that don't suffer from our epidemics of heart disease, and type 2 diabetes, and obesity. So if you take someone living in Japan, for example, um, which has the longest life expectancy, and they move to the U.S. and start eating and living like the U.S., they get U.S. diseases. And similarly, if someone moves to Japan from the United States they, and start eating and living like the Japanese, their rates of these chronic diseases plummet um, because these are lifestyle diseases. Evidence goes as far back as the 1920s, when researchers uncovered a surprising correlation between plant-based diets and blood pressure levels in East Africa. They took the blood pressures of a thousand people living in rural Kenya. They had a plant-based diet centered around fruits, vegetables, beans, whole grains, wild greens, and their blood pressures actually go down as they get older, whereas our blood pressures in the Western world go up. Same thing in rural China. 70-year-olds, same average blood pressure as 16-year-olds. We're talking 110 over 70 their entire lives. Ideal blood pressures. Vastly different diets, but what they shared in common is that they're plant-based day-to-day, with meat only eaten on special occasions. In the Western world, the only population getting it down that low, 110 over 70, were those eating strictly plant-based diets. 
A reevaluation of the modern diet is underway. Health experts, food advocates, restaurateurs, and the average consumer are taking a closer look at what we put in our bodies. Yet, even with increasing scientific information available, our dependence on highly processed foods and animal products is a hard habit to break. The only reason that people are not eating more plant-based foods is that the food industry has done a fantastic job with marketing and advertising. 70% of the food industry marketing is for processed foods, refined foods, and junk foods. Those are the foods that Americans eat the most. The food industry is the largest industry in the country. Food is very intimate, food is very emotional, food is very personal, food is very social. Chef Rich Landau has been paving the way for a veggie renaissance from his kitchen at Veg, a renowned plant-based restaurant thriving in the heart of Center City, Philadelphia, the cheesesteak capital of the world. Give people great food and they'll never look at what's not on the plate. We're wired to think that we need meat to enjoy our meal. That's really just not the case. It's about the flavor. It's about what chefs and cooks do to meat that makes it taste so good, not about the meat itself. They are loaded with flavor and nutrition. Real cooking is about taking uh, a vegetable like a Brussels sprout or a maitake mushroom or a carrot and making them so incredibly delicious that you, you realize that cooking is all about flavor. It's all about the preparation. How do you put a carrot in the center of the plate and convince people that this is worthy of being the focus of the plate? The carrot itself is absolutely delicious when cooked properly, and the texture of it is just hitting it home because it's so beautifully and perfectly cooked. So now you've convinced people that are used to seeing carrots only as pureed in a soup or raw in a salad that this is worthy of like knife and fork food. Statistics show that most people rarely consume the minimum amount of recommended fruits and vegetables each day. And their continued reliance on processed foods has many experts pushing for a complete rethink of the nutritional advice we've been given for the last half century. The reason people don't eat more vegetables is they just don't realize how powerful they are. I mean, we have this kind of resonating eat your greens, but what's the science behind it? We've known for decades that plant-based foods are healthiest, and it's pretty straightforward. Plant-based foods have fiber. Animal-based foods do not. Fiber is essential for um, preventing chronic disease and promoting health. And uh, most plant-based foods are high in vitamins and minerals, antioxidants, phytonutrients. They're the foods that promote health, that help clear our arteries, help us maintain a normal blood sugar level, help prevent heart disease, help prevent obesity and overweight. The most important thing is to eat real food that grows from the ground. Dark green leafy vegetables are the healthiest vegetables. In fact, the healthiest food period with a greater nutrient density than anything else we can put in our mouth, uh, translating to about a 20% drop in stroke and heart attack risk for each daily serving of greens. Capitalizing on the growing interest for nutritious options, many chefs have been working hard to redefine our relationship with food. Their goal, to create intensely satisfying, crave-worthy combinations that win out over less healthy, processed, and animal-based options. It's all about kind of changing you know, your perception of what you're expecting and what you're actually getting. How do you just rewire their brains as to what vegetables are capable of? Every vegetable is delicious. They're not a side dish. They're not um, torn up little bits in this chopped up little stir fry. Their main focus is on the plate. Let's take Swiss chard, for example. Something that people see as uh, traditionally very chewy, 
a um, little too leafy for most palates. Swiss chard, like most greens, has to be blanched first. A boiling pot of water with a little salt in it, the greens go in and they come right out. I mean, 10 seconds, that's all you really need. That basically sets their color and texture and tenderizes them. The next thing you wanna do is just saute them very gently with a little bit of garlic and olive oil in a pan with some salt and pepper. The trick with the greens is getting them cooked to perfection. If they're undercooked, they're gonna be a big, chewy, chlorophyll-laden mess that you're just gonna be like chewing like a horse at the table, and you're just, you're just trying to get through this. It's saying to yourself, it's healthy, it's healthy, it's healthy. Well, that's not how you should be eating your greens. The greens are actually delicious. In addition to dark, leafy greens, research has shown that a high intake of cruciferous vegetables like cabbage and broccoli can reduce prostate cancer progression, stop the spread of metastatic cancer, and prevent DNA damage. One recent study comparing smokers with a high intake of broccoli to smokers eating no broccoli at all found 30% less DNA damage in the broccoli eating group. The reason broccoli is so good for us is that any of those cruciferous vegetables, whether we're talking about cabbage, broccoli, collard greens, kale, have these class of compounds called glucosidylates. What they do is they boost your liver's detoxifying enzyme systems. So basically all the blood, before it goes to your body, from your digestive tract, first goes through the liver. The liver's like the body's bouncer keeps out any toxins, detoxifies any carcinogens, and then lets the blood flow to the rest of the body. And so that's why it's so critical to eat cruciferous vegetables every single day, because it so boosts your liver's ability to detoxify the carcinogens and pollutants from our environment. I absolutely love broccoli. It probably is my favorite vegetable. We um, blanch it first, and then we char grill it. And broccoli takes on this great smoky flavor when you grill it. The florets get charred up, the stem gets these beautiful grill marks on them. And then we float this in a shiitake dashi, which is a Japanese broth, usually made with fish, that we make with shiitake mushrooms and seaweed. And the effect is just so beautiful, um, very smoky, very rich, and also very, very meaty and satisfying. While dark leafy greens and cruciferous vegetables boast the biggest nutritional bang for the buck, diversifying our vegetable consumption is essential for our overall health. According to the Global Burden of Disease study, inadequate vegetable intake is a leading dietary risk factor for chronic diseases, comparable in harm to the consumption of processed meats. We should really eat the rainbow when it comes to choosing our vegetables because many of the anti-aging, anti-cancer, antioxidants are the plant pigments themselves. So, for example, the beta-carotene, which makes uh, carrots and sweet potatoes and cantaloupes orange, or lycopene, the red pigment in tomatoes, the same kind of chemical nature of the pigment compounds that reflects that, that gorgeous color is the same antioxidant properties that can be so helpful within the body. Eating a diverse plant-based diet raises our exposure to essential nutrients like vitamin C, found not only in citrusy fruits, but in vegetables like peppers and sweet potatoes. Experts say there may be more than 30,000 different phytonutrients with a long list of health benefits that are still being discovered. And they're not just found in the most colorful fruits and vegetables. Some of the most potent nutrients are packed in nature's palest packages, including cauliflower, onions, garlic, and mushrooms. There are over 2,000 varieties of edible mushrooms, and research has shown they are one of the most powerful foods for boosting our immune system, reducing inflammation, and preventing cancer. Just like there are unique anti-cancer compounds specific to the cruciferous vegetable family, there are these beneficial compounds found in mushrooms like ergothionine, which is an antioxidant amino acid found basically only in the mushroom kingdom, meaning if we don't eat mushrooms, we don't get it into our diet. It's found particularly in our retinal tissue um, and reproductive tissues. It's it basically 
housed in very sensitive tissues in the body because it has such a cytoprotective or cell protective effect. Eating just plain white button mushrooms can so boost our immune function it can significantly decrease our risk of uh, common respiratory infections like the common cold. For chefs like Rich Landau, the incredible variety and richness of mushrooms provides a tremendous opportunity to change people's perceptions of often overlooked foods. I mean, they're just incredible. They're good for you. They're meaty. They're just delicious. We love really, really big cuts of mushroom, like a maitake or portobello that can stand on their own in the middle of the plate. And again, it's about that knife and fork satisfaction uh, when you're cutting through it. We have another mushroom that we import from Italy called the Nebradini, and they're these um, medium-sized white mushrooms with this very, very silky flesh to them. So we shave these very, very thin, and we cook them in like this tomato basil sauce, and we call it Nebradini mushrooms as fazoletti. And fazoletti are just, you know, little handkerchief pieces of pasta, little tiny squares of pasta swimming in a broth or a sauce. So we're actually using the mushrooms to be the pasta, and that's exactly how it eats. Uh, and it's just beautiful what you can do with, um, with mushrooms in that sense, because they're so adaptable, they can kind of do what you want them to do, but you also have to listen to what they really are and respect their qualities. While the rising tide of health problems might seem like an uphill battle, significant progress continues to be made as plant-based foods make their way from farms to our tables. Research, preventive medicine, and awareness all play critical roles when it comes to our health. But the decisions we make on a daily basis continue to be the biggest factor. It doesn't matter what you eat on your birthday or special occasions, or on holidays. It's really the day-to-day -day stuff that adds up. And on a day-to-day -day basis, the more we can center our diets around whole healthy plant foods, real food that grows out of the ground, the healthier we will be long-term.